Can normal people achieve great things? That's the question we'll be answering today with Katie Bajnowski, who talks about what it takes to go through the messy transition period of being in a full-time job to then creating your own business, not because she wanted to, but because she was forced to during the last couple of years as she, out of nowhere, found herself being made redundant. Now, a lot of you guys may have experienced a similar thing or may know somebody who's gone through a similar transition. So in this video, we talk about all the top things you need to be aware of in how you can master the transition period. Katie calls this the messy middle. So if you want to know how to go through this transition like a champ and how to come out of it as a success story, then keep on watching to the end and take some notes because Katie's going to drop some absolute value bombs during this interview. And if you're a high achiever looking to boss up your life and your career, then subscribe to this channel because I'll be putting out videos like this every single week. I want to be respectful for your time and I know you know why you're here, so I've put timestamps down below. And hey, if there's anything that you liked in this or would like to have seen, put it in the comments below. And without further ado, let's get going. My name is Katie Pijanowski. I'm a Master Certified Life Coach. And most recently, I was a sales manager and trainer at a small fitness studio here in Dallas, Texas. And over the past six years, I've really been involved in the health and fitness space. And I am kind of finding myself in this transition period, which I think is really what we're here to talk about, which is so exciting because that finding yourself in that kind of messy transition can be such a hard place for us to be. And oftentimes when we find ourselves there, we think that we're the only one experiencing that. So over a month ago, I actually got let go from that position as the sales manager and trainer after um, doing really well at it. It was unexpected, just came out of nowhere, said, hey, we're actually giving your job to someone else. And it, at the time, it was really hard news to hear because I'm someone who really likes to be in control. And to me, this news was, it was very hard to take because it wanted it to happen on my timeline. And I already knew I was going to be transitioning from that job into something new but I wanted it to happen on my timeline, right? But as I'm sure many of us can relate to, but I found myself in this place and where I'm still sitting today in this kind of messy middle is what I'm calling it. And where I'm learning how to still be able to show up for myself and to control what I can control because I can't control that I got let go of my job, but I can control a lot of other things in my life. And so right now, what my focus is is number one, like self-care habits and making sure that I am making sure that I build myself up, mind, body, heart, and soul. And the second is to, I'm looking to transfer a lot of the skills I've gained over the last six, seven years to a field in customer success management, which is in software companies. So I'm actually taking all those skills and kind of bringing it into this new corporate position and utilizing the skills I'll be gaining there as well to help build out a women's retreat that I am hosting in October in Colorado with my business partner, which is all about trusting yourself, which is so funny because I feel like I'm in my ultimate trust fall right now where I find myself in this really messy place of navigating my own emotions and my expectations and just kind of letting life you know, come to me as it is. And I have to manage how I think about that, how I feel about that. And again, like I mentioned, control the things that I can control. So I'm um, building this retreat, looking to get to this new full-time job. And right now it's just in that kind of weird space. So that's kind of what I have going on right now, Ash. We hear so many people talking about how it's difficult sometimes and they've gone through different stages of life. And especially in the last couple of years, a lot of people found themselves going through transition or transitions. How did you feel when you got that go of kind of out of nowhere? Oh, so the call happened on a Tuesday in May and I was sat down with the owners and my immediate feeling was panic. I was really thinking, how am I going to pay my bills? This is unexpected. We are, and you know, I started kind of catastrophizing this situation because I was in that kind of state of fight or flight and I was really caught off guard by this information. So at first, that was where I was at. I was feeling really panicky, a lot of sadness, a lot of anger towards the situation. And it made me feel really out of control. And it took me, and I will tell you this, if I were to receive this information years ago, my first instinct would have been to just start doing all of the things to busy myself. So I didn't have to feel the panic and the sadness 
and the rejection that I felt, because that's really what I felt as well, is that I was being rejected from this job that I had done really well with over the last year and a half. So a year ago, I would have not responded in the same way I did today. And today, what I was able to do is honestly allow myself, myself that time to grieve and to sit in my feelings and to feel that rejection and to feel the sadness and to not make any decisions for probably about five days. I just let myself feel it all. And that was a really hard place for me to be because I'm someone who loves to run away from my emotions. And a lot of my clients that I've experienced in the past, they're the same way. They like to think their way through situations. But the thing about emotions is they live in our body. And if we don't allow them the chance to really to feel them and then allow them to you know, flow through us, then they're just going to fester and sit in us and they're going to get trapped. And so this was an opportunity for me to really practice feeling it all the way through. And really what I found through doing that is while it was very uncomfortable and it felt awful most of the time, I got to this other side and I was like, I'm going to be okay. Like, I'm going to be okay. I now have choices because when I looked at the situation, I was like, I didn't even really want to stay in this job anyway. So what if this is actually a gift? What if this could actually be the push I needed to go in the direction I've wanted to go for a long time? And so that's really where I've kind of started to land myself now is this is actually, it feels like it's, it happened way more than a month and a half ago. It feels like it was months and months and months ago, but that's just because I was able to give myself that space to process it. You're saying is effectively you managed to turn your negative into positive and you started seeing the benefits. It's like, oh, this didn't happen to me. This happened for me and I can now use it to change what I want to do anyway with my life. But, you know, a lot of people get stuck in that stage for a lot longer. And you mentioned that you kind of let it flow through your body. What else did you do to come out of it so quickly? Yeah, well, I would say number one is I got support from my close friend group, um, from my mom, from my coach. And I let them know I'm struggling. I need support. And what support looked like for me in that season was I just need you to, to listen to me. I just need to express all that I'm feeling and for you to not try to change it right now, but just to be there for me and be this like mirror so that I can just allow it to come out. So asking for support was a big thing. And that's something that, again, was a very hard thing for me to do up until really this was like an ultimate test of showing that I don't have to go through this on my own. Like I can ask for support. And the second thing was to start to build routines back into my life because I no longer had this job and it actually ended a lot faster than I thought it was because I ended up getting a kind of abrupt text that I was going to be terminated immediately. So I was like, okay, wow. now, yeah, so now I have space. And so the other thing that I started to do was think, okay, I need to have routine in my life. So I would wake up and make my bed and brush my teeth, drink water, take my vitamins, go work out, take a shower. So I started like, you know, these just routines I could get myself in. And then whatever else I needed that day, it might've been journaling, it might've been meditation, it might've been reading a book, or maybe just like spending time in nature. And I allowed myself to kind of pick those things me, depending on where I was at that day. Um, so really taking that time to like do a body scan and really check in with myself and be like, what is it that I need right now? And just starting with those little routines really helped me to be able to kind of propel myself in the right direction and to start to realize that this could actually be a benefit rather than something that's, you know, here to destroy me, I guess. <laughs> I think a lot of people really struggle to get to that stage. So the fact that you took this in such a stride is like, you know, a commitment to how amazing you, you dealt with everything and what kind of a good resilience you have. The crazy thing is what you just mentioned there is about like understanding the routines that you wanted to create you created these positive habits right from the start. So like we talk about this in our channel a lot, but it's like, oh, when you're in a negative spiral, you can just be stuck going in the negative spiral. And like the first thing to do is obviously to recognize you're there. And then you have to just start building these small habits that are going to get you out of it. Out of the things that you mentioned, which one habit, if you had to pick one, do you think was the most helpful? For me, starting to get movement early in the morning, whatever that looks like. It might've been a walk. It might've been a yoga on YouTube or some kind of workout video. Doing that in the morning really helps me because I, I wake up and I'm in that negative space. Like I feel that. 
And so for me, recognizing I'm there in that space and that I can do something to change it by moving my body and help move that emotion out of me, I always land in this place of, you know, I might not have wanted to do that in the beginning, but I'm landing here now in this space where I'm like, I'm so glad I did because I always feel more inspired. I always feel like all of the chatter in my mind can kind of just simmer down a little bit, turn that volume down a little bit. So I think that's probably the biggest or the most helpful rather habit that helps me. So the thing like I find with a lot of people is when they first start, you know, when you're in this negative mood and, and things just happen and you want to get better, but people tend to find it that they just lay down, that they don't have motivation. They're like, I just, I want to do things, but I just can't bring myself to do it. Have you ever faced that? And if you have, like, what did you do to get over that? Finding yourself in this place where like, I want to get better, but I just feel like I can't. Yeah, exactly. I've totally been there so many times. And I think part of it is again, recognizing that you're there and just allowing yourself to be in that space. Like allow yourself permission to be in that space for a second. Because if, if we find ourselves in this place of like, I want to be here, but I'm not, we're just creating this like huge separation and it feels way too far away to even take that first step. So if we just like meet ourselves where we're at, instead of trying to see this really long-term vision that's way, way over there, you can then start to ask yourself, what's the next best step? And it doesn't have to be this huge transformation overnight. When I found myself in some really hard spots, sometimes the, the only thing that I was able to do to get that routine started was get out of bed, make my bed, drink some water. And like anything that happened after that was extra. Like I started there. And then once I got those things down, I was able to say, okay, well, I've got that down. What else do I need? What else would nourish me? So you have to really meet yourself where you're at and, you know, give yourself a lot of compassion for where you're at. There is nothing wrong with being in that spot, but we have to just meet ourselves with a lot of compassion and then just start to ask those small questions about what is one thing that I can do right now. It's just such a good answer. I love it. Because I think a lot of people, like you said, get stuck in thinking about this way future. And one of the things that we talk about is like, yeah, an example I use is, you know, when people don't want to go to the gym or they don't want to work out, you ever hear them uh, speak about it they're like, oh, but, you know, it's almost this like step by step process. I have to wake up. I have to then find my clothes, figure out what to wear, to wear it, walk down, put my shoes. So it's like a thousand step process, which makes it so difficult to get there. So I really like the advice you gave around, you know, for people to just want to have the compassion to understand that it's OK and not punish themselves. But then the most important thing was like, hey, just start small. Like just getting out, drinking some water, getting a shower. Yeah. Great, good stuff. Right, I have one other little addition to that, you know, with the workout thing, I've been in the fitness and health space for over six years now. And that's, you're exactly right with the creating this list. And then we just make it so, so far away where we have to get up and put on our shoes and go to the gym and get our headphones and like all these different things that feels too overwhelming. So I find myself in this place too still. And I've been <clears throat> in the health and fitness space for over six years where I'm like, I don't want to do this right now. And so the, the question that always helps me is how can I make this fun? Because if it's fun, we're going to be more motivated to do it. Or if I just show up, like what if I just showed up to this workout and I didn't even have to pick up any weights if I didn't want to. And I just went through the motions. Like what if that could just be enough? Because you're creating that consistency of showing up. It doesn't matter if you lift, you know, the, the most weight you've ever done. What if you just made the expectation you show up and like that, let that be enough. If we just, if we're putting these expectation that we need to show up perfectly. I think that's one of the biggest things standing in our way from actually starting. Because it's progress. Ultimately, that's what you got to do. But what about fear of failure? You know, because now going to transition other people have gone to transition at the same time whether it be to the gym or a job or starting a business or any of those things and you've done multiple of those so have you ever had this fear of failure like what if yeah I mean every day and I think that in the beginning of my journey of into like kind of the personal development field there was always this thing of like you know being fearless and I really just don't believe in that because we always are going to experience that fear that comes up when we're in transition and when we're doing hard things. If we want to better our lives, we will have to do things that feel scary. And so we have to learn how to, again, meet ourselves where we're at with that fear 
and maybe even having that conversation with us. That's often what I'll do with myself is, is recognize, oh, I'm experiencing fear. What, like, what's actually coming up for, where do I feel that in my body? Is it feeling like really contracted? Is it in my chest, in my throat? What, you know, what's really going on there? And just like have that conversation with myself to find out um, where I'm at. But I just think that like fear is going to come up. So we have to learn how to help ourselves navigate through that. A lot of people fear the fact that they will have fear, <laughs> you know, which just literally just keeps people paralyzed because they don't know what to do with it. So I really like what you said, you know, just accept that it's fact of life. It's going to be there. It's going to happen. You just have to deal with it. So it's really good. And. You know, you were talking about how you're starting a business and you're going to be uh, going to be forty full uh, full time employed. Couldn't speak there. <laughs> What's your time looking like? Because it sounds like you'll be very busy on a day to day basis. I definitely would be, but I thrive in that kind of environment. And again, like I mentioned, because I'm already making it a point to have those morning routines. I'm really big on a morning routine. I love waking up early. I know not everyone does, but when you win your morning, you win your day. That's what a big thing that we hear often, but it's so true because nothing can stand in your way when you wake up a little bit earlier to do the things that you need to do to set yourself up for success. And so right now, yes, like I'm building this retreat with a um, business partner of mine and we are pushing that out there. It doesn't really take that much time. We have all the systems in place with the website and the pricing and everything like that. And so it's actually really easy to, to run that piece of it. We just share on our social media platforms. We do monthly workshops and things like that to continue to like show people what we're doing here with this retreat. Um, and I actually, I like having my day full of things. I'm just someone who's like that. So like being able to wake up and do all the things for myself, have a full-time job where I'm also like continuing to build skills that I'm going to be able to take to growing this retreat and then eventually growing other things. Cause I'm, I'm sure that's what I'm going to do. I'm always doing multiple things. That's just how I am. Um, and then, you know, leaving that, that time at the end of the day for like networking or even just recharging and just allowing that end of the day space to be like a play space. So I honestly think that routine is going to be really helpful uh, to me because it, it creates a little bit of structure and you can start to see, to plug in things that really matter to you um, around that, that work schedule. It's so important, I think, having a structure for the day. We see so many people when something different happens that they weren't expecting, they often go into this kind of panic mode and then everything blurs into each other. Either go into that spiral we talked about earlier and you just kind of sit, watch Netflix all day and then you feel like, oh my God, what have I not done again? Uh, but, or other people like you, you know, who are more high achievers, high performing, you kind of allow your, yourself to go through this little time where you wallow, you cry, you do whatever you want, everything you want, but it's in a set period. And then you say, you know what? It's time to go. And you start setting those structures. I think that's really important when you're an entrepreneur as well, because your day is completely random. and <laughs> You have to kind of set that cycle. So that's really, really good. What about your family and friends? Are they in support of your ideas or how, do that, how does that function? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely feel a lot of support from like my mom and dad in my ventures and just, you know, always encouraging me to just continue going and to not overthink things. And I have a lot of really great close friends that, you know, I, I feel like it's always good to have those like close knit friends that you can be like, hey, I'm struggling, like this is going on and they can help you through that. And just in them like reaching out and be like, hey, how are things going? I'm rooting for you. Like, I like, have you found that job yet that you're looking for? How's the retreat going with sign up? And I feel really lucky to have a lot of really positive support in my close friend groups and even in just my larger networking groups here in Dallas. I feel uh, really supported. And I think that's something that can really help you through this kind of transitional period is having those, those systems, those social systems to really help you through or even a coach or a mentor to help you just process through the things that you might be feeling like that, that fear or the uncertainty and being able to move to the other side. Like you had mentioned, like allowing yourself that space to feel it, but then saying, okay, now I have to take action. I can't just allow myself to sit in, my friend likes to call it uh, sitting in the vent. We don't want to sit in the vent. We want to allow ourselves to flow. <laughs> That's such a good analogy. <laughs> You mentioned something really crucial there about surrounding yourself with the right support groups. So you said if your friends and family, lucky for you, are, are very supportive, which is awesome. But I think for a lot of people, 
that might not be the case, at least not for a like, long time. So how did you go about finding these networking groups that you mentioned? The one that I found, it's a women's group here. It's actually all over the country. And I actually learned about that one through a mentor of mine. And so I got plugged into that one. And, and with the other one, it's a fitness community here in Dallas. And again, another friend of mine was like, hey, this sounds like a really great thing for us to get plugged into. We're both into fitness. And so I was able to get plugged into that group as well. So a lot of it too, like you really have to take that step yourself. Because even though I'm in these groups, like it is my responsibility to show up into those groups and, and ask for support if I need it or to, um, you know, share the things that I'm doing so that they can get excited about it. Like I can't expect other people to do that. I have to be the one to do that. And so even as you're in these networking spaces and it doesn't even have to be in person, right? Like if that's not available to you where you're at, what if you could plug into an online community? There's so many, whether it be on Facebook or whatever, and plug yourself into a group of like-minded people that are gonna help have the conversations that you need to have in order to move forward. So there's just so many different ways you can do it, but from you know, your personal standpoint, like you have to be the one to initiate that and say, I want to be a part of these spaces. I want to be supported by people who think like me, especially if you don't have that maybe from like family and friend groups, especially I think that's important as an entrepreneur because a lot of people, if, they're, if they don't do it, they don't understand it. They don't, they don't get it. And so you need to surround yourself with people who are doing those things, whether it be online or in person, and that will really help you to start to move forward. You know, whether it's uh, entrepreneurship or even just a normal job or anything that I think where people are looking to improve themselves in some way, I feel like it's really important to have like-minded people because you can grow so much faster with other people than just by yourself. But what if people don't have the confidence to initiate the conversations? Or, you know, even if you go to a networking event, you're like, there's so many people, I don't know how to talk to them. What do you do? I think confidence comes with taking action, honestly. And so I think the first step that I would recommend in that scenario is getting really clear about where you're going with your life. Like where, like really sit down and say, where do I want to be three months from now, six months from now, one year, two years, three years. And that will really help you to see like, okay, what are the types of connections that I need to make in order to become this person that I want to be in the future? And that can really help you to start to come into those spaces with more of an intention. And maybe the intention is friendship. That's perfect. Maybe that intention is a business partnership. Maybe it's to find new clients. Whatever that intention is, it's perfect, but you need to have that, be able to discern what that is for you. And I think having that like vision and it can change, right? We can always set ourselves down and allow it to evolve and change with us. But having that, that vision will help you to start to eliminate things that don't matter because they're not going to be in your future and to start to put more of the things in that are going to help you become that person you want to be. Especially eliminating things that don't serve you anymore. Because I think we often get stuck in like, oh, I've set these as goals or I've set this as my vision. You know, I can't change it now. Or I'll look like a failure or anything like that. So I like that, that you mentioned that. Um, and what about you for your goals now? You mentioned the retreat. What else are you working on? I am working on the retreat. Like you said, I am going to be getting a new full-time job to help support me as I continue to grow these ventures. Um, other things I'm working on are... So in October, I will actually be not resigning my lease here in Dallas and kind of like living a little bit more remote, remotely for like maybe four or five months. So working towards that goal, um, probably stay with some family in Colorado and stay with some family in Chicago and just kind of bounce around a little bit before I come back here to Dallas. And I've also been learning a lot about day trading, which is an investment way to you know trade currencies and stuff like that. So that's been another thing that I've been into. It's a long-term strategy of grow growing wealth, but um, it's been really fun to learn how the, the markets move and, and how to utilize those skills in order to grow wealth. So those are some things I've been into lately. That's amazing. Wow. Like woman of many, many talents. That's so cool. <laughs> but that's it's good, right? The other thing you mentioned in that story is that uh, you had a mentor or you had multiple mentors. Can you talk about that and how important is it to have a mentor? So important. And I want to start by saying that in the beginning, like when I started my entrepreneurship journey, it was in the network marketing space, which is perfect. But I, I didn't really have that more like one on one mentorship that I needed to grow. I was mostly living by this mentality and this belief that I had to do it all on my own. 
And it really, at the end of 2018, really, is when I realized I needed to start taking off that superwoman cape and to ask for help. And honestly, I have grown exponentially in the last three years because of the multiple mentors that I've had in many different spaces, whether it be business, I had a body image coach that really ended up just being an overall life coach for me to help me through the transitions that I was going through, through the pandemic and just we all go through trans transitions, right? So we all need that support. And it, I think having that non-biased person who's outside of your friend circle can just be so, so valuable. We often are too close to the problems that we're experiencing and just the things and the habits that we have in our life. And so when we can have someone to reflect back to us what's going on and to ask us really deep questions that we might not ask ourselves, I mean, the, the limit does not exist for the growth that we can achieve with that support. And I am just so thankful for my you know, past self who was willing to invest in those mentors because I wouldn't be here where I'm at today without that. Amazing. Yeah, I totally agree with everything you said there. I think it's like a guiding light, you know, that, that just takes you where you need to go. So I really like that. Um, Casey, so how can our viewers work with you or reach out to you? What can they do? I'm super active on Instagram and you can just find me on my name. It's Katie Pichinowski. You can find me on Instagram and my website for my retreat. If you want to check that out, it's an all women's inclusive retreat called trust fall into you, which is so appropriate for what I'm going through right now. And that's just trustfallintoyou.com. All the info is there. And all of your links will be in the description below as well. So we can check that out. Casey, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, the amount of value that you've dropped today is unparalleled. So it's been amazing chatting with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ash. And thank you for doing all of this work that you're doing and pushing out this message. Now, all of Katie's links are down below. So feel free to message her. If you've got any questions about how to boss up your life and your career to become a high performer and a high achiever, then feel free to DM me. My messages are always open for you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel, turn on the notification bell, and give this video a like. It's going to help out a lot. And while you're at it, make sure to watch these two videos because YouTube thinks they are the ones that you need to watch next. Until next time, see ya.